So this week I'm gonna go through making something for Valentine's Day and these are cookies my dad would make growing up. They're basically just sugar cookies um, where you have cut out a window in the center um, in a heart shape uh, and you put two cookies together with jam and icing. So it'll be two sets of cookies per each of these. One is just a base, is the entire cookie, and then one as a window uh, with a smaller cutout. So I just got these uh, heart-shaped cookie cutters and you just want enough space so that as they bake, um, it's not gonna deform the center shape of the heart. And as you work them, it's not so thin that you might uh, break it as you try to press them into the icing uh, to hold them together. So while I wait for the butter to soften to make these, I'm going to go through uh, de-seeding uh, some raspberry jam. So these are raspberry preserves. As you can see, there's the seeds in them. Um, and you can use that straight in the recipe. Um, I, however, prefer seedless jams when I'm eating something. It's a dessert. And so... Seedless jams can be a little bit more expensive, not a ton, but if all you have are, is a seeded uh, preserve or a jam. What technique you can use is you pull it out of the jar. So in this case, you can do as much as you're going to work. I'm just going to do the whole thing and then replace what I don't use into this jar uh, and use it throughout the week. Now you can use a spoon for this, but what I find most useful is one of these ladles. So I got the small one that I've been using in a lot of other recipes. You can use a full size one as well. And what you're doing is really to just press the jam through the colander. See, it's coming through. Um, this will get the seeds out. It's a little bit of work, um, but it does give you a nice, better, smooth jam to work with in the end. You can also just use a strawberry jam. Uh, those typically don't have the seeds in them as much as raspberry. Um, I typically like to use a red uh, jam for this. You can use any other type for it. Uh, it just won't give you the more red center for the hearts. And as it's coming out, you can kind of scrape the side of the colander to clear it off. You will get down to a point where you're not able to push a, push a whole lot more through. Um, at that point, you'll get kind of this thicker paste at the bottom with a lot of seeds. Okay. I'll just set that aside. Uh, and I'll use this at the end. So now, I let the Butter soften a bit. Going to start on the sugar cookies. Now you don't have to soften the butter. Um, you can just kind of cube it up and stick it in, and just start it that way. It'll just take a little longer to start creaming. So I've got two sticks here. Uh, it's eight ounces of butter, which is what we need for this recipe. Um, to facilitate the process, I am going to cut these up slightly before I stick them in. Now to this, 
8 ounces of butter. I'm going to add 10 ounces of sugar. There we go. And about a teaspoon of salt. six ounces. There we go. And that's all we need to start. So with the paddle attachment, I start this going. going to keep it on low until it starts incorporating. Once the sugar is starting to look a little wet in the bowl, I can increase the speed without worrying about it flying up out of the bowl at me. And we'll let this go until it starts creaming. We want the butter to be lighter in color and sticking to the sides of the bowl. For this is eggs, milk, and vanilla extract. So we need two ounces of eggs. Which I'm going to do first. Okay, that one egg is 2.05 ounces. These are extra large eggs. So that works out great. And to this, add two ounces of milk. quarter of an ounce of vanilla extract. I'm going to use a teaspoon measure to get it out of the bottle. I'm going to tear this first and zero this out. Makes it easier to measure. So that's point one. Another one. 0.26. So we need, I'll mix it up and then introduce it to the butter that we already have going. I don't need to work this at all, I just want to get it combined so that it incorporates smoother, faster. So with this on a low, I'm going to put this on a two. I'll probably need a spatula at this point. Just start by getting some of this off the top. So it'll mix fully. I'm just gonna slowly add this in. Too worried about how fast I add this in, other than just the splash consideration. So it doesn't splash back out at me. And the two is pretty good to get this to incorporate. You will want to scrape down the sides a little bit just to get the bit that was against the bowl kind of working into the mixture. measure out the rest of the dry which is 20 ounces of flour and 0.625 ounces of baking powder. So 
So I just rinsed out the bowl that I was using before. So I don't have to wash too much later. Start with the baking powder. Looking for 0.625. Good. And then we get that zeroed out and we need 20 ounces of flour. whisk again just to combine the baking powder with the flour just so I don't get chunks of baking powder later on. Should be good enough. I'll just add that in and we want to be you can add it all in right at once. Just be, start out on a nice slow setting. I like to add it in stages just because I don't like the flour popping up at me when I'm doing this. You can use the spatula from before. Kind of push out stages of flour. Just looking for it to combine. We don't want to work it too much. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna clean the counter off and get these rolled out. It's going to be important with these cookies to really get a good uh, barrier between them sticking to the counter. So decent amount of flour as I roll these out um, should help because we're cutting the centers out of the some of the hearts. We want to be able to get it off the counter pretty easily. So we don't deform the shapes of the cookies. It's okay to like work this a little bit just to get all these pieces fully incorporated. Then make sure to reflower. Okay. Decently thin because it makes it a little harder to manage as you're putting them together, but in the end, it's a little bit better of an end result because you don't have as much cookie for each one as you put the two together. So, um, as you go, I usually just start from the outside, try to stick them as close as possible, kind of move them around a little bit, make sure that they're separate. Um, and I'll, as I do these, I'll do the outside, the large shape first, and then every other one, as I pull them off, I will cut the center out of. So as you go, you can kind of pull the excess cookie dough away. There are times where if you flip it around, you can kind of get more. So if I went this way, I'd run out of space over here. 
So try to fit as many as you can so you don't have to re-roll as much of the dough. I will do a second round of rolling for this, but the first round will always be better. Um, then the next ones, each time you work the dough, you will get more kind of gluten built up from the flour. And I'm just going to kind of collect the center dough, stick it in there. Makes it a little easier to work each heart as a separate cookie if it's not near the rest of the dough. Or at least it, is, it tends to be for me. So pull all this out. Okay, so we've got 19 cookies. Now we don't want to be gentle with them. And what I'll do is as I take them to put them on a sheet pan, um, every other one will line up the smaller heart and pull it out. This tends to be a small enough one that it'll like pull out the hearts as you go. But then you need to be careful getting these onto the sheet pan. So one thing you can do, uh, which I do sometimes is, and I may do for the rest of these, is move the heart cookie first to the sheet pan, then cut out the center uh, so it doesn't have to move as much. And we'll bake these at 375 for eight to 10 minutes and then set them to cool. While the cookies are cooking, or while they're cooling down, I'm gonna make some icing. So you can make your own icing. You can buy icing for this. You really just want to be able to use the icing to essentially glue the cookies together. So I'm gonna use um, some butter, some shortening, and some confectioner sugar to make a quick icing. So this is four ounces of butter and to that I'm going to add two ounces of shortening. Okay. And we'll need eight ounces of confectioner sugar now what I do is I will start blending this, these two fats together before I add in the sugar. Put it on here, the panel attachment. This will make it easier to combine the powdered sugar in with it if it's more of like a combined homogenous mixture without all the chunks. So you've got the chunks in there, you have more chance of the powdered sugar just kind of billowing out of the mixer. Okay, and to measure out the sugar, I am just going to take the bowl off. We don't get any of the drip, any of that dripping off. Tear this. We need six, eight ounces. Eight ounces of confectioner sugar. It's half of this box. Stick 
on and scrape down the sides. Okay. Put it on the stir. Once it's no longer powdery, I'll turn it up, get a nice whip going in there. Okay, and then I'll check it for thickness. I want it to be able to, uh, to spread it, but not have to apply too much pressure. That's pretty good. If it is too thick, you want a tiny bit of milk in there with it, or water, and that'll thin it out. Uh, this should work well for what we need. So I will set this aside. Get all this off, set it aside. And then once the cookies are fully done and cooled, we'll be ready to to put all this together. This is the combined stage you want to get to. Uh, so the way you do this, you can use a piping bag for the icing. Um, one time I made probably over a hundred of these for an activity. Uh, at that point I definitely used a piping bag because it was a lot faster, but you can just use a better knife just to make a nice border of icing. This not only holds the cookies together, but it keeps the jam in the center from oozing out the sides. So once you have that, I'll take your jam. And you just need enough here fill this center part, keeping in mind um, the size of the hole that you made. So you want, when you press this together, for it to fill the hole. Not fully, but to start filling up the sides. And that is it until we get to the final step. The final step will be dusting them with powdered sugar. It gives them a nice kind of speckled white contrast to the cookie and the jam. And we'll go to that point. I'll usually stick it down, this is a note, and working with the jam, get some on it and then use the tip of the spoon to kind of push it around where I need it. The final stage of these cookies is to lightly dust them, or heavily dust them, depending on your preference, with powdered sugar. Usually to do this, I'll pour some powdered sugar into a very small sifter that I have. And you'd be tempted to just go up and down to try to sift. But when I'm dusting with powdered sugar, I find it's easier to tap the side of the sifter. So I have more control over when it's coming out. I don't have to worry about accidentally popping the powdered sugar out over the edge. And don't worry here if you're covering the, the jam. Uh, the powdered sugar will dissolve into it. So try not to get it too overly covered, but it will if it's dusted white, 
eventually uh, clear up. Valentine's cookies 